Hi, my name is Tommy Kelly. Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, today what I want to touch upon is part of my kind of vegan series and things. What actually I was recommended by, somebody actually said that they suffer a lot of issues where people always say that we've got canine teeth and this actually makes us a meat eater. So like I say I want to put this into kind of common sense here. Like I say this is one of the most common justifications for eating animals that obviously us vegans encounter. I say, they always say, if I wasn't a, a meant to eat meat, then I wouldn't have these canine teeth. But I say, it's obviously a knee jerk defence that often a meat eater has been con confronted with an information about the routine cruelties of animal farming and such. Obviously, we humans have no biological need to consume meat, eggs, and milk and eggs, which we all know as well. But like I say, there's obviously several serious problems, like I say, with the canine teeth argument, like I say. The most glaring one obviously being that the present premise that the presence of canine teeth meant to eat meat. But I say in truth, really, with it, the exception of obviously rodents, rabbits and obviously pulkas, nearly all animals have canine teeth, like I say. In fact, se several herbivores and primary plant eaters have ferocious canine teeth. And as you'll see in the video I'm about to show you, the rest of it, I'll be posting up pictures. So I'll be showing you one till four that this this one on reasons why it doesn't make us a, really a meat eater. And the next one it'll be five to nine. So like I say, the largest canine teeth of any land animal obviously belong to a true herbivore. But I say another problem with the canine teeth argument is the idea that just because we have a physical attribute that obviously enables us to do something harmful, we are normally justified to obviously perform that activity unnecessarily and whenever we basically want to. Like I say, humans are capable of in inflicting all kinds of violence that we all know. Like I say, if basically if you weren't meant to beat up people, you wouldn't have these two big fists. That's the that's kind of way I look at it. So that's that's the way they say it. Basically, well, if I wasn't I wasn't meant to beat up people, why have I get these fists? Or what, if I wasn't meant to kick people, why have I get these feet? This is a kind of logical thinking that's basically that they're using here, and it's the same that they're adopting to eating animals. They're basically saying we've got canine teeth, so we we have to eat meat. Like I say, basically as well that our capacity to harm others has nothing to do, whatever or not. It's basically right. To harm others, like I say, indeed, m most people would say it is wrong to cause harm when they can just easily d avoid doing so. Like I say, and we could e easily and drastically, obviously, reduce needless harm and suffering we cause to other animals simply by basically taking different choices at the grocery store, whether that be adopting milk for a plant based milk, whether even doing a few meatless days a week or a, a few m meatless meals a week. Anything you can do, like I say. Maybe even if you're having, instead of having your butter, you have your, like, things like, obviously, your soya butter and things like that, and things like, basically like that. Like I say, number one reason you, your canine teeth don't make you a meat eater, and I'll put this one up, is the hippo. Like I say, not only do most animals, including herbivores, obviously have canine teeth, but the largest canine teeth of any land animal actually belong to a true herbivore, and that's actually the hippopotamus. Like I say, hippopotamuses are extremely territorial and obviously aggressive as well. They're sword-like canines which can reach a terrifying 16 inches in length actually, which is really, really amazing to think. They're obviously used for combat and play roles and, and feeding as well. Like I say, the hippo's diet consists of grass, of which it obviously grazes at dusk as well. Number two reason it doesn't make you a meat eater is... You, you, is obviously the gorilla. Like I say, gorillas are exclusively herbivorous. Like I say, mountain gorillas prefer a diet of foliage, leaves, stem, stems, pith, and obviously shoots as well, and a small amount of fruit. Like I say, lowland gorillas as well also le eat leaves and obviously pith, but they eat more fruits and occasionally tiny ants or termites as well. Like I say, gorillas are giant canines and have nothing to do with meat eating as well. So that's another one that basically shows us as well. So that's two of the best that are out there. Three that don't make us a meat eater is also the saber-toothed deer. Like I say, 
I say it's just like a tiny deer with giant fangs. Musk deer, as they're officially known, are obviously herbivores who live in the forest, forested mountains in southern Asia. Like I say they're around two feet tall, weigh between fifteen and thirty-seven pounds, and the males are elegant at te canine teeth from saber-like tusks, which they obviously use in territorial disputes or when competing with other males, basically. So obviously, what kind of food that they obviously must deers tear into with the vicious canines. Obviously their menu is a vital gore fest obviously. Things like leaves, flower, grasses, mosses and obviously lichens as well. Number four actually is the gelada baboon. Let's like see, geladas are basically they're sometimes called the bleeding heart monkey of the gelada baboon and it's basically a species of old world monkey only found in the Ethiopian highlands. So like I say, they're basically primates who primarily eat grass. Grass blades, I like I say, make up to 90% of their diet. The rest obviously combines are flowers, rhizomes, roots, herbs, small plants, fruits, creepers, bushes and thistles as well. Like I say, they may eat insects, like I say, but very, very rarely. Like I say, geladas use basically their sharp teeth, two-inch canines to attack rivals or potential predators. So I hope this has kind of gave you a little insight, like I say, 5 to 9 next week will be basically the camel's fangs, obviously the javelina, uh, and obviously the comparative anatomy that we have as well. So I'll be getting into quite a lot, a lot about this guys, and I hope you really like this, and it kind of lets you know a bit about reasons why we really shouldn't be eating meat, and because we've got canine teeth doesn't mean that we should be harming animals at all. Like I say, adopting a plant-based diet isn't the most you can do, it's basically the least you can do to stop all this slaughter and cruelty to animals every single day on our back doorsteps basically, and we, a lot of people turn a blind eye to it. Like I say, we're, we're not just we talk about the planet dying constantly and we're actually contributing to that. Only us can make a stand and make a difference and save the animals, save the planet and save the human race. So I hope I'll speak to you all very, very soon guys and send you all my love. And remember what the little guy at the end of the video says, he knows best. <laughs> remember guys, binge on life, purge negativity and starve guilty feelings. Speak to you all soon and love you so much.